Hello, welcome back to Lotman on what is quite a breezy day today. And uh, welcome back to the second part of the mini series about my new flower border that I'm dedicating to my grandmother who recently passed away. So today I thought we'd talk a little bit about my design process, if you can call it that, <laughs> my plan, uh, what I sort of envisioned for that space. So now that it's, you know, it's all ready for planting, what am I going to do with it? Well, when I had this idea in mind, I immediately thought about her favourite colour. So I'm going to involve quite a lot of her favourite colour, which was blue. Um, there's actually a rose that's called Mary Rose, which I discovered not long ago. It's by David Austin Roses and my grandmother's name was Mary. And in fact, my middle name is Rose. So even though the flower is probably named after the ship, the Mary Rose, um, I've decided to use this flower to sort of dedicate her. And, um, you know, it's a beautiful pink bloom with lots of layers. It's quite an old variety which means it's not going to be as resilient to diseases but we'll see how it goes and <laughs> it took me a while to get hold of them because they're out of stock everywhere but I managed to get three um, which is perfect so I'm going to use them as one of the main features in the summer design. Um, so that was a key focus, using lots of blue has also been a key focus and when you think about blue tones at first you might not think well there aren't many flowers that are blue but actually when I started to do my research, there are so many flowers and even shrubs, you know, leaf, leafy foliage can also be that really silvery blue color, things like your hosta. Uh, there's one called uh, mouse ears, which is a very silvery blue color. Um, but I'll be using lots of forget-me-nots, which if you've seen my videos before, you know I love. They sort of create a blue carpet in my wildlife area late spring. So, and obviously for the name, you know, I'm going to be using a lot of forget-me-not. I also want to have interest throughout the year, so I'm going to be planting it with plants that will bloom right from early spring, as far in late into winter as I can, uh, and still having some sort of elements of interest over the winter months. Everybody likes to design their borders in their own way, some just go with the flow. I tend to have more ideas as I go along with the project, so I don't tend to build a design straight away because it can always change and you know gardens are always changing i keep mine quite low key i do sketch it out on a notebook and i've got a big list of plants here so i know what's going to be blooming when some people also find it useful to go through seed and plant catalogues and actually cut out the plants that they have or those that are similar to it and create a bit of a collage um, in a book so that you can visually see the flowers when they're blooming and then you can help pair the colours together, make some contrasts and some exciting and interesting sort of plant combinations. Talking about plant combinations, I wanted to show you um, this book that I have. I actually picked it up from a charity shop a few years ago just for a couple of pounds. Uh, it's called The Encyclopedia of Planting Combinations by Tony Lord and photography by Andrew Lawson and it is such a fantastic visual guide because it gives you ideas on what plants to plant with what and it's just a really useful tool so I thought I'd show you this as a recommended book reading if you can get hold of it I haven't had a look online to see if it's still available anywhere this one was published in I think 1999 so it is fairly old so I've made a bit of a loose plan and um, I've made a list of the plants that I'm using by season so I know when they're going to be blooming. So in spring we've got the Narcissus tete tete some primulas, forget-me-nots and foxgloves. Summer we're going to have nigella, the rose, Mary rose, some napita, jasmine, big plans for the jasmine, uh, the erigeron, that's the daisy-like flower, and some dahlias. Uh, in autumn we also have the dahlias, some sedum and the napita should also come back with a second flourish in September. Uh, so there's a lot going on in quite a relatively small border. So uh, let's go over and, and visualise what I have planned. Now then the sun's come out so you can see just how much this border gets all the afternoon sun and it means I've got a lot of plants I can play with. You know I'm not working with um, 
really shady conditions which means I've got a lot of plants that I can choose from but right at the top it's underneath that hawthorn tree which means that spot up there the ground is going to be much much drier much more um, compacted as well from where all those roots are so whatever I put at the top will have to be relatively drought tolerant it might be a little bit more shaded as well so whatever I put in that patch underneath the tree needs to be a lot more tolerant of drought like conditions I've also got the gate which will swing open so something kind of soft and low growing would be better many of you are already quite familiar with my dead plum tree that I've since turned into a bird feeding station but I want to go a little bit further with this and actually use it even more as part of the design in the allotment and I'm going to use it as a trellis to grow something up and I've thought about clematis, I've thought about climbing roses I'm going to go, I think, with a jasmine I say I think, I've already bought it and it's huge <laughs> so it's going to climb up the trunk of this tree and it's going to fill the space with its gorgeous scent in the summertime those beautiful white flowers and even in the winter time the leaves turn this beautiful sort of burgundy wine colour so it will still look quite interesting and it will give the birds more places to hide um, whilst they're perching before they use the um, feeders so that's just another part of the design that I've had in mind I've placed out these plant pots to know where some of my bigger plants are going that I haven't yet got in pots so things like my bare root roses and also a couple of dahlias that I'm hoping to fit in as well that aren't ready to go into the ground yet. Dahlias go into the ground in early June and I can't believe it's snowing right now. Um, <laughs> and um, so I've placed out these buckets to know how much space they're going to need and how much, you know, where I'm going to site them within the border. <laughs> can't believe it's snowing. <laughs> it's April. So here I've got some Carex. This is Carex Evercream. It's like a nice grass that'll add seasonal colour. This one doesn't die back in the winter so even when everything is dead and gone this will still be there adding a little bit of texture and interest over the winter months and I really like this one because it's got lovely little tufts of seed heads at the top there. So this would be nice to go at the front of the border or, at, or to um, break up some of the bigger leafed foliage so we've got some nice tall spikes to contrast that with the variegated foliage. We've also got some Alcamilla mollis and this is going to work lovely underneath the roses and at the front of the border. It's quite low growing, it will grow these really vivid yellow flowers which will contrast well with the blue flowers that I'll have going on and also I just love the way that they catch the water because raindrops fall on this and they stay there similar to how they do on the lupins but they'll also gather all around the edges and look really beautiful. Nepeta, this is going to be one of my main flowers for the blue and I, I choose Nepeta over lavender for a couple of reasons um, it's easier to maintain in my opinion it will spread itself a little bit with um, seeds so you'll get lots more free plants quite quickly and you can also take cuttings from it um, but also I'm not a huge fan of the scent of lavender and lavender only blooms once whereas if you prune Nepeta straight after it's flowered for the first time you can get a second flowering in early autumn so late August going into September and um, I've got here a shorter variety but there is also a taller variety as well but because my border is quite narrow and there's gonna be a lot going on I don't want it to be too tall so this is the dwarf variety. I also have a geranium this is a hardy geranium so it'll come back every year and it'll have big blue flowers you know I'm continuing that blue theme I've got here some sedum that I've bought um, sedum has really succulent foliage and it's quite good because it's a late bloomer so it'll bloom into autumn again and this one will have nice pink pads so I'm going for a pink and blue sort of theme here and yeah the pollinators absolutely love the flowers so it's a great one for late flower interest and I've also got a few more that I've got from my grandmother's garden so I have quite a lot of sedum it's also great because it's really drought tolerant so if you've got a front of a border that gets quite dry um, this is a good choice to grow it's still snowing can't quite believe it um, I've also got a whole tray of these foxgloves and this is the apricot foxglove 
I don't really have much sort of apricot in my theme but I think it'll work with the blue and the pink quite nicely and these were actually given to me as seedlings from some of the staff at Chatsworth when I visited when lockdown was actually lifted during my birthday so I think these will add some nice height into the border and in late summer sorry late spring going into summer and these here are some of the honesty plants that I managed to salvage before I dug up that border that self-seeded and I've got about 24 of these plants and they're going to add a nice little drift of white running through it and um, yeah I've got lots of these to use as gap fillers and for the front of the border and another little gap filler is the Erigeron caravanskianus. This is the daisy flower I have all over my allotment. A lot of you ask about it. And um, these are some of the self-seeded plants that I've just sort of saved and grown on. They're now filling these little plugs. They do need to bulk up quite a bit. I mean, it's gonna be another year until they really sort of create that nice big mound. But you know, you gotta wait for things to grow when you're gardening. <laughs> I've also got plans to fill any other gaps with pelagoniums. They are um, originally from Australia. And my grandmother did travel the grove quite a lot. So she's a remarkable woman. You know, I think she's um, quite like the Erigeron in the sense that she's very hardy, tough woman. She was quite stubborn. She um, definitely had her opinions <laughs> and wasn't afraid to tell you about them. Uh, but she was very gentle and loving. And um, yeah, she traveled the world, like I say, she was a remarkable woman. She stayed in Australia and in Cyprus for quite a few years of her life, uh, survived cyclones, hurricanes and things. So she had many stories to tell. So it would be nice to also include a few plants that are from the countries where she stayed. So maybe some white straw flowers, because they're also from Australia. Uh, they might be nice little add-in features for the border too. I've also actually got some agapanthus, which I'm really pleased I managed to get hold of. Um, I actually picked them up from her garden um, a couple of days ago. So it means a lot to me that I've got a flower that's blue, that's from her own garden to plant here in the border. Um, I've got quite a big clump that I need to actually divide. And it's formed quite a nice big clump, um, but I suspect it hasn't been divided for a little while. And it's a good idea to divide agapanthus every four or five years to keep them blooming and um, keep them in good health. Now agapanthus like to be sited in a spot that's full sun. Um, it doesn't like to be overcrowded with the leaves um, so it's a good idea to space them out. So I want to try and create two or three plants out of this clump. So what I'm going to do is just split it down the middle. You'll see the roots are really thick and fleshy they're actually quite similar um, to bindweed roots. They look quite similar. Um, but yeah, these will really easily grow and it's really easy to propagate them by division. And I think I'm gonna go down the middle here where there's a bit of a gap. And you can use a knife, you can use two garden forks back to back to prise them apart. I'm actually going in with my knife because it's very sharp and it will do the job in no time. It looks quite brutal, but the plant is going to absolutely thrive after this. There we are. So now we've got two big chunks. I'm just going to go in a little bit further so that I've got three here to work with. So there's a nice little division there. So now we've got three big chunks of agapanthus to plant. I also came across these flowers when I was on the Sarah Raven website. I've not grown them before, but they're a lovely blue-like daisy, which I think she would have absolutely loved. And they bloom for quite a long time as well, from July to October. So these will be a lovely little feature, even if I have them in pots and I can dot them in between any gaps that I find. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and to hear about my plans for the border and all the plants that I'll be planting in it in the next episode. So until then, take care and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.